Hello, welcome, namaste. My name is Aldona and today I'm going to be sharing with you the dolphin pose in yoga. My favorite animal, so I was kind of surprised today that I hadn't covered it yet. Now, a few things about the, the dolphin pose is that it actually has many different names in in Sanskrit. So that happens often in Sanskrit. You'll have like certain terms used for many things and things are kind of, you know, through each other. I've mentioned this before, but for example, one of the names of dolphin pose is Katur Svanasana, which means quarter dog pose. Then there is also Ardha Pincha Mayurasana, which is half uh, peak, feather peacock pose. And then there is Makarasana, which is like a mythical crocodile, which I personally know as a completely different posture, which I believe I haven't yet covered, not sure. Um, maybe I should. Anyway, that aside. So, actually, dolphin in Sanskrit is Gala Kapi, or that's at least the name of river dolphin. So, it seems as if the uh, English translation dolphin pose doesn't actually reflect any of the Sanskrit various, any of the various Sanskrit names of the posture. So why this is so, I, I would think that it's because when you are in the dolphin pose, there is something about it that you kind of look like a dolphin. So a lot of the yoga poses are named after what they actually look like. So it seems that it's been kind of uh, westernized in a way to be called the dolphin pose. Now, a few things about the dolphin pose, or a few more things about the dolphin pose, it's that it's a posture that is a great preparation for inversions, uh, such as, for example, headstand, forearm stand, or even that um, pincha majurasana, which is, a, well, I guess that's a, a, like a kind of for, forearm stand. So any inversions in which you're going to require strength in your arm and aligning your shoulders and all that, this posture will be great to prepare you. For that. Um, there's two variations of the posture. There's one where you are pressing the head against the floor. Actually, then there's also another posture called Ardha Shirsasana. Shirsasana. Shirsha. I always mix it up. Shirsasana, the essay. Um, which is half headstand, which is as if you're right about to go in headstand. So that's even a fourth name of this posture that's not literally translate as, translated as the dolphin pose. Right. So um, that being said, because of the way that you put your uh, shoulders, it really strengthens your whole whole body, but especially the arms. So to move on to speak to some of the many benefits of this posture. So it strengthens the arms and legs. It helps to calm the mind and relieve stress. It stretches the shoulders and it stretches the legs, especially the backs of the legs. You know how like it's, it's like when you're in that down dog position, so the whole, the hamstrings, the calves, the arches of the feet, they get a good stretch. They relieve some menopause symptoms, or at least have been reported to, or any menstrual, dis menstrual, dis dis b -b -b <laughs> remix. menstrual discomfort uh, women, some women can experience. It also helps to alleviate headache, insomnia, backache, uh, optimizes or at least improves digestion. And it's also therapeutically practiced to improve things like asthma, flat feet, high blood pressure, and sciatica. So a lot of this therapeutic yoga can often be very complementary with uh, Western medicine. There you know, seems to be this endless debate of you know East versus West, but it's about the whole integration of both right like the rational and the feeling like it's both it's not either or it's not oh my heart versus my mind it's mind for heart heart for mind feeling rational nothing is black or white my shirt is black but it's maybe not completely <laughs> anyway that was a total tangent there uh last thing precautions uh when practicing this posture so when you shouldn't practice this posture when you have neck shoulder injury or if you have a weak back or hips now to practice the posture 
you would come onto all fours. My knees are under my hips. My wrists are under my shoulders. And then I just put the elbows directly under my shoulders and I hold the hands together. I tuck my toes and I lift and push back. So this is one variation. See, I'm pushing back and my, my shoulders are not flush, they're pushing up and away from me. My neck is relaxed. I'm constantly trying to push the heels down onto the floor. My whole body is active to come down, come down to your knees and come into child's pose. Now, the other variation is as if you were going to come into headstand. Um, so you put your hands across um, the forearms, grabbing the opposite elbows, you place them down like that, you create a hand of measurement, put the hands together, and then you put the crease or the crease, the, like the hairline, just between your hands in front of your hands. I can't really show it because of the camera, but I would be basically do like this. And I put my the crown of the head he, here, so it would have like just a little bit of space to roll your head back like so and then coming up so the difference with this one is that the let me open the lid a little bit is that the top of your head is more like on the mat like so and then you push back and everything is the same Whereas in the other one, you are not putting the head on the ground. So we have basically one variation without the head on the ground. And the other variation is with the head on the ground. I personally uh, prefer the one with the head off the ground. I just find it more enjoyable i find i i find the one with a with a head up uh, on the ground a little bit it for, for me personally it just makes me want to go straight into straight into into headstand because it feels almost as if it's more effort to be in half headstand than the full headstand um so for me i prefer to practice the dolphin with a head off the ground flowing through it you can do you can do some uh fun like flowy things with it for example like let's say that you're here you know you could come into plank and you could hold it for to increase strengthening or you could you know do stuff like you could if you this just if you want to exercise right like you could dip the head and you can come back through here and you can walk your legs sideways or you can walk them on this part, you can put them together, you can put them to distance apart, right? So just like being in the posture and breathing and moving in the posture just to feel it out, just to feel your body. So yes, that is the dolphin pose for you today. I hope that you enjoy the posture. Thank you for tuning into this yoga tutorial just felt like tuning in today and sharing a yoga posture with you. I know it's a little bit, um, well, it is what it is. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy the posture. Thank you for tuning in. May you be well. May you be healthy. May you be happy. And may you be free. Namaste.